In this podcast episode, the host interviews Dr. Michael Isratel, a sports scientist who shares his insights on the importance of consistency and specificity in fitness, debunks common nutrition myths, and discusses the psychological aspects of dieting and body image. He also addresses effective strategies for muscle growth, optimal training frequency, and the role of community support in personal development. Israetel emphasizes that consistency and specificity are crucial for achieving fitness goals. Many individuals mistakenly believe that significant health improvements require extensive time commitments, leading to a defeatist attitude. Israetel counters this myth by asserting that even a couple of hours a week can yield substantial benefits if done consistently. He highlights that workouts do not need to be lengthy or complex. Rather, short, focused sessions can be highly effective. Another prevalent myth revolves around nutrition. Many people cling to outdated notions about healthy eating, such as the belief that certain foods are inherently bad or that meticulous meal preparation is necessary. Isretel argues that these beliefs are often unfounded. A balanced approach to nutrition can lead to significant improvements in body composition and overall health. Isretel suggests conducting a needs analysis to determine specific goals and the time commitment an individual can realistically make. This analysis helps tailor a plan that aligns with personal desires and current fitness levels. Understanding one's goals, whether gaining muscle, losing fat, or improving overall health, is crucial for creating an effective strategy. Many individuals experience gym anxiety when starting or returning to a gym routine. This anxiety can stem from fear of judgment, uncertainty about equipment use, or concerns about not meeting personal fitness goals. Isratel reassures that this anxiety is normal and can be mitigated by familiarizing oneself with the gym environment, starting with simpler exercises and gradually increasing complexity as confidence builds. He encourages individuals to focus on their own progress rather than comparing themselves to others. Muscle growth, or hypertrophy, is primarily driven by mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and muscle damage. Israetel emphasizes the importance of specificity in training, meaning individuals should have clear goals regarding which muscles they want to develop. Overload is another critical principle. To stimulate muscle growth, one must adequately challenge their muscles. Effective training can be achieved through various rep ranges, typically between 5 and 30 reps, as long as the last few reps are challenging. The key is to ensure that training is progressive and that individuals consistently push their limits. For beginners, Isratel advises that significant muscle growth can be achieved with just two sessions per week, performing two to three sets per muscle group per session. As individuals become more advanced, they may need to increase the frequency and volume of their workouts to continue seeing progress. Training a muscle group twice a week yields better results than once a week, and training three times a week offers even more benefits. However, improvements become less pronounced as frequency increases beyond three times a week. A full body workout routine targeting all major muscle groups is an excellent approach for those with limited time. Isretel describes the physiological processes involved in muscle growth. When muscles are subjected to tension during workouts, molecular mechanisms within the muscle cells detect this tension and initiate the muscle growth process. Importantly, muscle growth does not occur during the workout itself, but rather during the recovery phase, which includes rest and nutrition. The growth process peaks approximately 24 to 36 hours after training, making adequate protein intake crucial during this recovery period. Muscle growth is a gradual process that requires consistent training, proper nutrition, and sufficient rest. Concerns about muscle loss when individuals stop training are common. Israetel explains that noticeable muscle loss typically begins around two weeks after ceasing workouts, but this initial loss is often due to water weight rather than actual muscle tissue loss. After several weeks of inactivity, muscle size may decrease, but the rate of loss is gradual. Importantly, muscle memory plays a significant role in regaining lost muscle. If individuals return to training after a break, they can regain their previous muscle size much faster than it took to build it initially. Warming up before workouts is essential to prepare both the muscles and the nervous system. 
Isratel recommends a simple warm-up routine that includes lighter sets of the exercises to be performed, gradually increasing the weight. This approach helps increase blood flow to the muscles, improve flexibility, and activate the nervous system, enhancing performance during the workout. A proper warm-up is crucial for preventing injuries and ensuring effective training sessions. Isratel identifies several common mistakes individuals make in the gym that can hinder their progress. One major mistake is neglecting proper technique, which is essential for effectively targeting the intended muscle groups. Maintaining good form maximizes muscle activation and minimizes the risk of injury. Additionally, he warns against ramping up weights and training volume too quickly, which can lead to overtraining and burnout. Gradual progression and paying attention to the body's signals are vital to avoid common pitfalls in training routines. To support muscle growth, Isratel emphasizes the importance of consuming adequate protein. Individuals aiming to maximize muscle gain should ideally consume three to five meals a day, which helps ensure a steady supply of nutrients, particularly protein, crucial for muscle repair and growth. While it is possible to gain muscle with fewer meals, such as through intermittent fasting, the rate of muscle gain may not be as impressive. The trade-off between meal frequency and muscle gain is highlighted, with more frequent meals generally leading to better results. When discussing pre-workout supplements and caffeine, Isratel shares his personal experience of not using stimulants due to natural energy levels and anxiety issues. While some individuals benefit from pre-workout supplements, particularly those containing caffeine, Others may experience negative side effects, such as heart palpitations or increased anxiety. He advises starting with lower doses of caffeine and adjusting based on individual tolerance. Many people use pre-workout supplements as a ritual rather than a necessity, especially for short workouts. Isretel firmly believes in the principle of calories in versus calories out as the foundation for weight management. While this concept is critical for weight loss or gain, it is not the only factor to consider. Many people fail at calorie counting due to poor estimation of food portions and a lack of understanding of macronutrient balance. While calorie balance is essential, the quality of food and nutrient timing also play significant roles in achieving fitness goals. Israitel discusses the psychological aspects of dieting, noting that many individuals struggle with calorie counting due to the pressure to be perfect. This perfectionism can lead to a cycle of strict dieting followed by binge eating when they feel they have failed. He stresses the importance of developing healthy eating habits rather than relying solely on calorie counting. Individuals should learn to construct balanced meals and maintain a flexible approach to eating, allowing for occasional indulgences without guilt. Addressing body image, particularly among men, Isratel highlights the prevalence of muscle dysmorphia. Many men, despite being fit or muscular, often feel inadequate about their appearance. This condition is characterized by an underestimation of one's muscularity and can lead to negative mental health outcomes. While women are often stereotyped as being more concerned about body image, men also experience significant pressure regarding their physical appearance. The discussion touches on genetic and social factors contributing to these issues, emphasizing that mental health is closely linked to body image perceptions. Isretel identifies several myths surrounding weight loss that can hinder progress. One major myth is the belief that one must be perfect in their dieting efforts. A single slip can lead to feelings of failure and abandonment of the diet altogether. He stresses that occasional indulgences are normal and can actually be beneficial for maintaining a healthy relationship with food. Another myth is the misconception that the approach to losing weight is the same as maintaining it. After reaching a weight loss goal, individuals should focus on maintenance strategies rather than strict dieting. Isretel supports the common belief that weight loss is predominantly influenced by dietary choices, suggesting an 80-20 ratio where 80% of weight loss is attributed to diet and 20% to exercise. This perspective is backed by the constrained energy hypothesis, which posits that while individuals can increase their physical activity, their bodies will adapt by reducing non-exercise activity, making it challenging to out-exercise a poor diet. 
Dietary changes can lead to more substantial and sustainable weight loss, as it is easier to control calorie intake than to burn off excess calories through exercise. Isretel highlights the inefficiency of trying to compensate for high-calorie foods with exercise. For instance, consuming a couple of donuts can require running several miles to burn off the equivalent calories, which is often impractical for most people. Instead, making simple dietary adjustments, such as reducing junk food intake, can create a significant calorie deficit without the need for extreme exercise regimens. While exercise is beneficial for overall health and fitness, it is not the primary driver of weight loss. Regarding supplements, Israetel is skeptical about their effectiveness for the average person looking to lose weight or gain muscle. He mentions that while creatine can be beneficial for muscle gain, it does not aid in weight loss. The focus should be on foundational health practices, such as adequate sleep, stress management, and consistent exercise, rather than relying on supplements, which he considers overrated. When discussing steroids, Isretel acknowledges their effectiveness for muscle gain, but warns of the significant health risks associated with their use. He shares his personal experience, noting that while steroids can lead to rapid muscle growth, they come with various side effects, including increased body hair, acne, and long-term health risks like heart disease and kidney failure. The psychological effects of steroids can be particularly troubling, with some users experiencing mood swings and other mental health issues. Isretel explains that the physical changes from steroid use can be noticeable within weeks, with users potentially doubling their muscle gains compared to natural training. However, he cautions that the benefits come at a cost, particularly for younger individuals whose growth plates may close prematurely, stunting their growth potential. He stresses that while steroids can enhance physical performance and appearance, the trade-offs in terms of health and well-being are significant and should be carefully considered.